Welcome to the Wednesday evening service. Let's all stand. We're going to sing a song to start here. Blessed be the name. Let's lift our voices together as we sing. Blessed be the name. You ready? All praise to him who reigns above in majesty supreme, who gave his son for man to die, that he might man redeem. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. We're going to sing on the last year, His name shall be the counselor. Lift up your voice on this last verse. His name shall be the counselor, the mighty prince of peace. Of all earth's kingdoms conquer, whose reign shall never cease. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Good singing, you may be seated. And uh, you're probably wondering why I am in here leading singing and all the teens came in here last minute. Uh, Pastor Thompson had to run out for an emergency uh, with a church member. And uh, we're not going to give any details right now, and, uh, but we would ask. We're going to spend some time in prayer at the start of the service. And uh, he was not able to be here at about 6.30. He got a call and had to, had a, uh, ha had to head out. And so we are going to uh, be having kind of a larger youth group in here. And uh, we're going to be going through our uh, and finishing up our Genesis series here uh, this evening. But what we want to do this more uh, this after this evening, I'm sorry, is just spend some time in prayer together with the people around you, maybe in your family unit or with someone nearby. Uh, pray for that situation. Again, we're not going to give any details, but if you could spend some time in prayer there. And then in your prayer page, there are also some other needs. Uh, in bold are the new needs that were listed here. And uh, if you could pray for these few things, uh, the first one here is Andy. And uh, that's Romel's dad. Pray for his health. And then uh, for Bob Keller as well, if you could pray for his health during, that, uh, during this time for them. And I know they would greatly appreciate it, the Kellers, Bob and Jane. And so if you can split up just for about five minutes, Janine's going to play here, play softly here on the piano. And if we can just spend some time in prayer asking God for these specific needs and for the situation uh, that, uh, that uh, caused Pastor to leave, uh, this, have to leave before the service this evening. So let's spend some time in prayer here.
And dear Lord, we just want to thank you for allowing us to be here tonight. Uh, thank you for uh, Ryan stepping up to preach tonight. Lord, I just ask you to bless him. Help him to speak clearly with your word, Lord. Help us to take that uh, in our lives and apply it to our lives and our family, Lord. Just ask you to bless Pastor tonight uh, with his special need with his family. Help him to be an encouragement and a blessing to them as well. Uh, help the need to just uh, uh, be taken care of, Lord. Uh, we ask that you'd bless all the different ministries going on tonight uh, with the uh, Spanish ministry. We ask you to bless the, the children's ministry, the kids' clubs, the teachers in there to keep everybody safe and all that they do to help them enjoy uh, the time together, learning your word. Uh, we ask you to bless our church, all those that are not able to be here tonight. Lord, just help them to have a good night. Help them to be able to uh, spend some time in your word this week and be prepared for the weekend, Lord. We'd ask you to bless our nation, Lord, especially bless our political leaders and help them to be able to do things together, to, to stay close to you, to get close to you, Lord, to just keep our nation safe in all that we do. We'd ask you to bless our missionaries that are around the world, Lord, that uh, we're able to support, to lift up, to know that uh, we're praying for them, help them to have all their needs met uh, with Bibles, with uh, monies that they need to support their churches and to be able to reach new people, to start new churches, uh, to reach new national pastors, Lord, to uh, just be able to spread your word around the world, Lord. I thank you for your love. I thank you for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. We're going to go over a, quick announce a few quick announcements here, and then we'll jump right into uh, the Bible study this evening. Uh, the first few announcements, uh, there is a Master's Club Awards Ceremony happening today, and so if you have uh, kids in Master's Club following the evening service, uh, you can head over there, and they'll have a little ceremony there and give out the awards, I think, uh, some of the badges and things over at Master's Clubs. Uh, also, Seedline Project is happening next week. Uh, we need everyone's help with this. We're going to try to uh, put together 100,000 Bibles, and uh, we did that last year. I think that was uh, 100,000 is what we hit last year, so we're going to be doing that again. It's next Wednesday. So next Wednesday night during the evening service, we're going to meet over in the community center and uh, for our evening service, and we'll be over there putting together Bibles. And then all day Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday till about noon, uh, we'll be doing that as well. So you can come by at any time from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., and uh, there'll be a staff member there or someone there uh, to put you in the right spot. And I think uh, we, uh, you fold. There are people that fold the, uh, the covers, that collate, that put the Bibles together, that staple. And then there are people that cut the Bibles. And so there's different stations that you can go to. And that's always a great time. It's one of my favorite times of the year. I enjoy it. I know the, uh, the kids and the teens specifically, they love it too, uh, mainly just because they get to get out of class and put together Bibles. Um, and so I've never seen them so excited to serve Jesus. Huh, guys? You get to miss some school during that time. And uh, on Wednesday night, Pastor Jay will be starting a series on March 24th uh, that's entitled The Secret Life of Teens. And so plan to be there for those uh, sermon series there. It'll be a huge uh, blessing to you as uh, you seek to raise these knuckleheads over here. All right, if you have your Bibles, turn to Genesis chapter number 1. Genesis chapter number 1. And uh, like I said, we're, gonna, we're just going to teach exactly, I'm going to teach exactly what I had planned uh, to preach in youth group this evening. And uh, in youth group, uh, we've kind of bounced around a little bit the past few months, uh, but for the past, how many years, guys? Seems like forever. Maybe two and a half, three years, Derek? What do you think? Does that sound about right? About three years, we've been uh, going through Genesis, verse by verse through Genesis. And uh, tonight, we had planned on completing Genesis together as a youth group. So going verse by verse through Genesis. And tonight we're planning on uh, completing that. And so we're going to complete it together as a church family and uh, go over. It's uh, kind of a little bit of a synopsis and some of the major takeaways from, uh, from this great book that we studied together. Now, there was a lot we took away, uh, but I chose a few that I think are, are going to be good reminders for you teens that were in uh, that we're in for most of those through the book study of Genesis, and I hope that it will be a help uh, to you as well. So I'm excited about this. God moved in the book of Genesis in some amazing ways, but the beautiful thing about God is that he moves in our lives right now. One of the most important themes of Genesis is God's love for humans and his involvement in our lives. We see that all throughout the book of Genesis through so many different characters through the book. God created the universe and all of life that we see here and was pleased with his work. He gave the people the responsibility to take care of his creation. You see, God didn't just randomly create us. 
He didn't just randomly create humans. He made us in his image, the Bible tells us. And that means he gave us the ability to love, to think, to feel, and to choose. He gave us the ability to choose. And all throughout Genesis, we see, um, we see different characters that make some really great choices, and we see them make some pretty poor choices. And all throughout the book, uh, we, can, we can learn from the lessons of Abraham and Isaac and Joseph, who made some really wise choices, but then going the same way from Moses and these same characters who made great choices, but we see some poor decisions they made, and we can learn from those things as well in Scripture. And God gave us the ability, He created us in His image, but He gave us the ability to choose. You see, we are valuable to God, and He wants us to experience the joy and peace of knowing and doing His will. And that's what He created us for, to experience and know the joy of doing and crea- uh, doing what we were called to do, fulfilling His will. This, uh, this morning, I had the opportunity to preach in a Christian school uh, in Huntington Beach. Not our Christian school, another Christian school that I had an opportunity to preach at this morning. And uh, I, I spoke about that this morning on the joy of fulfilling God's will. And uh, kind of a similar message to what I preached here in chapel. But our joy is not dependent upon circumstances. We understand that, right? My joy is not dependent upon my circumstance in which I'm in right now. My joy is dependent upon my God and who my God is. You see, we know the difference between happiness and joy. Happiness and joy are completely different. You see, I can have joy without being happy. And we see that in Scripture as we look through Genesis as well. You see, we may wonder why we are and some humans are capable of these wrong things that we read all throughout the book of Genesis, from hatred, violence, selfishness, deceit, since we have been created to be good. Well, this happens because of sin, and we are about to see here in a moment. You see, we aren't perfect, but God has also given us the ability to overcome sin. Look with, you, uh, look with me in Genesis chapter number 1 and verse number 24. Genesis 1, 24. We're going to look here, Genesis 1, 24. There are two phrases that I want us to see in Genesis 1, 24 through 31 that are going to be really helpful for us. And we're going to go all throughout Genesis. Again, this is kind of a, a little bit of a book review here. Um, as we're, about, as we're finishing up today, really, this is the last message that we're going to go through in Genesis. And so these are just some of the key points that we're taking away from Genesis. Verse number 24, the Bible says this, And God said, so he said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after this kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after his kind. And then he says this statement, And it was so. And it was so. You see, God spoke it into existence, and then it says this, and it was so, in verse number 21 there. Or, I'm sorry, in verse number 21, we also see here, when we read there, if you go up a little bit, the Bible says this at the end of the passage there, and God saw that it was good. So we see those three phrases, and God said, and it was so, and it was good. You see, when God creates something, it is always good. When God creates something, it is always good. How do we know God works? We see it here in Genesis 1 and verse number 24 through 31. And it was so, and it was good. He created something, and he created it to be good. So, all throughout the book of Genesis, we see some amazing characters that lived some amazing lives and did some pretty miraculous things, if you've ever read through Genesis, which most of us have, because at the beginning of the year during our Bible plan, we all have these goals to finish our Bible plan, and usually sometimes through, man, once we get to Deuteronomy a little bit, sometimes we start slipping up a little bit. If you're with me, anyone been there before? Just me? Okay, cool. All right, cool. Just me. Everyone else is perfect, finishes their Bible through every year. And uh, I, I, I know I've been there before. I remember, I remember when I was a teenager, and I always committed to do it, and again, sometimes day 15 to 20, sometimes I start slipping up again. Uh, a little bit there. But as we read through Genesis, we see God do some amazing things through some amazing people. And so a few takeaways from this book that I want, to, I want you to see this evening. Number one, God always keeps his promises. God always keeps his promises. Turn, if, uh, turn with me, if you will, to Genesis chapter number 6 in verse number 17. Genesis 6 in verse number 17. God always keeps his promises. Genesis 6, 17. We're on our phones over there, teens. Let's be on our Bible app, not on Snapchat. Genesis 6, verse number 17. God always keeps his promises. 
The Bible says this, And behold, I, even I, do bring forth a flood upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven. And everything that is in the earth shall die. But with thee will I establish my covenant. And thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee. You see, God promised Noah that if he, uh, that if he would obey him and trust him, God would keep Noah and his family safe in the ark. And you know what? God always keeps his promises. God did not say that he would take Noah out of the flood, but he promised to bring Noah safely through it. Isn't that a beautiful statement? God didn't promise to take him out of the flood, but he promised to bring him safely through it. You know, in life, I think many of us can attest there have been some difficulties, there have been some hard times, there have been some flood moments in our lives. There have been some times where there are some huge waves we feel are crashing all around us. And God doesn't promise to take us out of those things, but he promises to bring us through those things. At times if we feel like we're drowning in a flood of troubles, maybe during this season some financial troubles and some financial problems weigh down on us. Personal relationships are kind of, uh, are, we're struggling with personal relationships and we feel these frightening waves coming all around us. Problems seem sometimes to pour in faster and faster and faster, and we feel as if we almost can't bail out. And during these times, remember God's words to Noah here. He doesn't promise to take you out of the flood, but he promises to bring you through it. He promises that if you obey, if you obey and trust him, he will not let us drown. God always keeps his promises. I've, uh, I'm, I'm a new dad. Uh, my son, my oldest son Chandler is two, and uh, my little guy Cruz, he's uh, almost two months. And so being a new dad, and now Chandler's, Chandler's to the point um, where there's a little bit more interaction, you know, with a newborn, with Cruz, he pretty much just eats, sleeps, and poops. That's his life, okay? That's what he does. And uh, I really, you know, I've learned with newborns, um, you know, I try to do what I can, but really I am not that valuable to that newborn, okay? It's all about mom, all right? That's what it is. And uh, so I, I do what I can. I try to help out my wife and everything like that. But with Chandler now, uh, I can interact with him a little bit more, and I can... Um, I, I, we can engage a little bit in conversations and things. Obviously not full adult level conversations, but we can talk back and forth a little bit. And his favorite thing to do right now is go to the park. We live over by the Nadosix house, and there's a park within, two parks within walking distant, distance. We are spoiled. We are blessed. And uh, hashtag blessed, Todd. And uh, we, uh, we, Chandler loves going to the park. And so uh, before his nap, it's like whenever he knows the nap is coming, sometimes we'll get him a bottle ready and stuff like that. He just starts like, like looking at me like crazy, like park, 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 and just says it over and over and over and over again. And I always tell him the same thing. Chandler, we'll, we'll go to the park after your nap. Well, I'll take you to the park after your nap. Well, can I be honest with you? As a dad, you know, sometimes I say that just maybe to get him to sleep, <laughs> just to get him to take his nap. And maybe I have the right intentions, but honestly, the park is not that important to me. And so sometimes I forget. But you know who never forgets? Chandler. Chandler never forgets. He wakes up from his nap, and the second he comes down that stairs, he is ready to go to the park. No matter what happens, he's ready to go to the park. And if I don't take him to the park immediately, there is problems with Chandler. There are some serious problems. And maybe you've experienced in your life some people that have maybe failed you or let you down or promised you something, and they didn't come through with it, right? And that can be extremely difficult. I've been there. That can be extremely difficult. But the most beautiful thing about our Heavenly Father is this. When He makes a promise, He keeps it. When He makes a promise, He keeps it. And you can trust that you may be experiencing some difficulty in your life. And I'm not naive to the fact that we have teenagers in here. You guys might be experiencing some difficult things in your life. You might be dealing with some anxiety and some pressure from different leaders in your life. And you may be experiencing peer pressure from friends or whatever it is. And you have a God that when he promises that he will take you through these difficult seasons, he will. And you can trust that. God always keeps his promises. Not only do I see that God always keeps his promises, but through Genesis... In verse, uh, uh, the second point here, we're going to look in Genesis 21, if you'll turn there in a minute. Genesis 21. God 
hears us. God hears us. You see, although Abraham was upset over Sarah's desire to send Hagar and Ishmael away, he obeyed God. And the Lord reminded Abraham about his promise to make Ishmael the father of a great nation. Still, that did not mean that it would be easy for Ishmael. He and Hagar nearly died of thirst in the desert, but God heard their cries and provided water for them. What a beautiful thing. God heard their cries. God hears us. You know, we spent some time at the beginning of the service this evening, spending some time in prayer to God. Isn't it a beautiful thing that God hears us? When we pray and we, we cry out to God, we have a God that hears us. You know, there are so many other religions that spend time praying and praying and praying with no one listening to them, with no one that can respond. And we don't hear God audibly, but we have a God that hears us and that listens to us and that cares for us. And here, Abraham, in Genesis chapter number 21, we see him upset about a situation here. And when they cried out to God, he heard them and provided for them. You know, sometimes God doesn't always work the way that we want or imagine him to work, right? Sometimes we want something to happen a specific way, and it doesn't always happen like that. We want him to do this in this specific situation, or we want him to work out this situation in this way. And maybe he doesn't do it the way we have planned or that we see it happening. But you know what? God hears us. And like we talked about before, talking about living with joy and fulfilling God's purpose, my joy is not dependent upon my circumstances like we read earlier and like we talked about earlier. But my God hears me. And he responds. We experience sometimes and oftentimes dry places in our life like they experienced here in Genesis 21 that make us desperate. Sometimes the pain we feel like is so great that maybe it doesn't even seem possible that it will ever end. Sometimes it seems like we're not going to get through it. But God is always there. When all hope is gone, and sometimes we feel like we, we just can't go on with our lives and we, we can't go on living this same life, God hears our cries. And so I want to challenge each one of us this evening. If you're experiencing pain, if you're in a difficult season in your life right now, and you feel maybe trapped, you feel like you just can't get out, you have a God that hears you. You have a God that hears you and that promises to be with you. And so don't feel like you're alone. We've all been there. We've all been in situations where we feel like we're alone. We feel like we have no one there to help us. But you have a God that is there to help you. What a beautiful picture. The third thing I see here in Genesis is this. Deception has a price. Deception has a price. Look with me in Genesis 27, verse number 42. Genesis 27, and verse number 42. I'm going to read here a few verses. Genesis 27 and verse number 42. Are we, are we live streaming this service? Does anyone know? Is someone up there? Are we live streaming? Okay. All right. Here we go. I had a personal illustration, but I'm not going to share it because now it's live streamed all over the web. My family will come and find me and hunt me down. They'll never invite me over to family dinner. All right. Deception has a price. Genesis 27 and verse number 42. The Bible says this, And these words of Esau, her elder son, were told to Rebekah. And she sent and called Jacob, her younger son, and said unto him, listen to this, Behold, thy brother Esau, as touching thee, doth comfort himself, purposing to kill thee. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice. Arise, flee thou to Laban, my brother, to Haran, and tarry with him a few days, until thy brother's fury turn away, until thy brother's anger turn away from thee. And he forgot, and he forget that which thou hast done to him. And then I will send and fetch thee from thence. Why should I be deprived also of you both in one day? You see, Rebecca thought she was doing the right thing by sending Jacob away so that he and, uh, he and Esau would not do harm to each other. And honestly, that in that situation, because of the mistakes they had made, that probably was the best situation. Now that we know later Esau forgave his brother, but in that moment, he was 
extremely angry. But little did Rebecca know that sending Jacob far away for a while, as the Bible says, would turn out to be 20 years. Because of a mistake that they made together, it ended up breaking up a family. She didn't know that that would be the last time that she saw her son. You see, Rebecca died before Jacob ever returned. Imagine how much happier their family could have been if they would have trusted God to follow through with his plan. And ultimately, God worked out these evil things for good. We see in scripture, right? God worked out this mistake that was made for his good. But in the grand scheme of things, imagine how it would have worked out. You see, we are often impatient and think that we need to help God. Isn't that funny that we get to that point? I mean, we get to this point where we literally feel like we need to assist God with our lives. As if he needs our help. As if he doesn't know what's already going on in our lives. As if he hasn't already planned out everything for us already. And so we get to the point where we feel we, we build ourselves up in pride and we become so prideful and arrogant and we feel like we can assist God in working out the details of our life. And that is a huge mistake for us to get to that point. We often become impatient and think that we no longer need him, that we have these grand ideas and, and these amazing schemes that are going to work out and figure out everything in life. We shouldn't simply be doing nothing and waiting around, but we need to sometimes be patient and just listen to the voice of God. We do need to be careful about pushing and doing and pushing and doing that we become so focused and so driven that we begin to ignore God's will for our lives, that we begin to ignore God's purpose. Many times, God surprises us in showing us what he has planned. And often the truth is, whatever we think is great for our lives, God has something so much better. And so we try to, we try to make these plans and, and we try to uh, fulfill our own purpose rather than God's. And what God had for us was even so much better. Let's keep our eyes on him and our minds open, to, and not open, and keep our minds focused on what God has for us. God has a beautiful plan for each individual represented in this room. God has something amazing planned for each one of us, and sometimes simply all we have to do is make sure that we don't get to the point where deception fills our lives and where we try to navigate and, and, and make a path for ourselves because deception has a price. And Jacob and his mother had to learn that the hard way. So not only do you see those three things, fourthly, I see this. Faith is rewarded. Faith is rewarded. We look in Genesis 41 and explaining the king's uh, dreams here. Joseph gave the king the good news and the bad news, right? Joseph didn't simply tell the king the meaning of his dreams, uh, even though he could have. He gave the king also a plan. He didn't just give him uh, and, and, and explain to him his dream. He gave him a plan. You see, many people are able to see the problems, but do not offer workable solutions. Joseph showed that he trusted God to do what he had promised him. You see, the king recognized that God was giving Joseph wisdom. So he made Joseph the second most powerful person in all of Egypt. You see, Joseph's promotion came suddenly and possibly when he least expected it, because remember, he was in prison. It's easy for us to think of Joseph as kind of like an overnight success, but rather we should think of it as God orchestrating and working in Joseph's life. When the time came for Joseph to move to the top, he was prepared. He had learned how to trust God through good times and through very difficult seasons as well. He had also learned how to be sensitive to the needs of others. See, in Genesis, we see how God created a good world populated by creatures and humans of his own handiwork. But often, everything seems to get off course. But just like we see Joseph, who had faith in a God where, if we're being honest, if we were in that situation— It'd be very hard to see the end results, right? I mean, he was sold into slavery. His brothers hated him. His own family didn't want him. He was sold into slavery. He was put in prison after he was tempted for nothing he did himself. I mean, literally, 
hit rock bottom. And it would have been easy to just say, and just give up on God. It would have been really easy to just say, forget it. Forget it, I'm done. I'm done with this whole thing. I'm, I'm literally sitting in a jail cell. I've been, I've been through the worst things ever imaginable on this earth. I'm in a terrible situation. I'm done. It would have been easy to, to act like that. But yet, Joseph had faith. And we see that faith is rewarded. Now, faith, having faith does not mean that you're going to have an easy life. We all understand that, right? Having faith d- does not mean, like we learned about earlier, that there are not going to be waves in our life and there are not going to be ups and downs and highs and lows in our life. But we do see that faith is rewarded. Faith is rewarded. And in Genesis, we see God do some amazing things through some amazing people. See, as people, we tend to doubt God. We try to have our own ideas and our own solutions to problems. Then, as we see in the book of Genesis, violence swept through the human race. And then God had to step in and almost entirely sweep out humankind. Well, then we see him make a covenant to Abraham that passes down from many generations. So what does this mean for us? What does it mean for us? It means that God loves us. Mistakes and all. God loves us. And he cares for each one of us. He always has. And he always will. He doesn't plan to leave us on our own, stumbling through life with no hope for a better day. Just like he was there working all throughout Genesis... He will be there for and with us through all of our mistakes and experiences. He's going to be there through all of it. And again, he's not promising to take us away from those things, but he does promise to be with us through those experiences. Genesis, such an amazing, amazing book with some pretty amazing characters that we see God use in some really fantastic ways. And they were not perfect. These characters that we study, they, they're not perfect. They're not without fault, without failures. They all experienced some difficulties in their lives. But the common theme of the book of Genesis is God. God orchestrating in every life and in every situation. I don't know where you find yourself tonight. I don't don't know in, in, in what capacity you're experiencing difficulty. But you have a God just like in these characters, these, uh, these people in scripture. I don't want to use the word characters because the Bible is a true story. But these people in scripture, we see God orchestrate and work in their lives. You have that same God. The same God of Moses is the same God of Ryan. And it's the same God of you. And when you find yourself confused, lost, alone, trust the God that will be there with you every single step of the way. Four truths. God always keeps his promises. When he says something, he'll do it. When he says He'll do something, or when he says something, he will do it. God always keeps his promises. Secondly, God hears us. You have a God that hears you, and that cares about you, and that loves you. Thirdly, deception has a price. We see from Jacob here, and from Rebecca, that because of the decisions they made, There was a huge price. She would never see her son again because of the decisions that she made. Deception has a price. And lastly, faith is rewarded. Man, Joseph, not seeing the end. If I were in his shoes, just being transparent, I probably would have given up. Probably would have lost all hope. Man, Joseph was so strong. And he had faith and trust in a God that did. He kept his promises. I don't know where you find yourself, but I hope that these four simple points were helpful for you.
we had a good time in youth group studying through the book of Genesis and uh, studying through all these characters. Went verse by verse. I think there was one point we took like two chapters and one message because it was a list of names. And uh, for those of you that have preached before, it's uh, sometimes difficult to just preach through a bunch of names, Kyle. And so we, uh, we skipped a couple chapters, Mac, but, or combined them into one. We had a good time studying through Genesis, and God taught us some pretty amazing things and some pretty amazing stories of some miracles that he worked through broken people, through people who are flawed and who fail. But the common theme was an amazing, all-powerful God who orchestrated through every person and every detail that we see in this book. Let's pray. Father, we're extremely grateful for this truth from your word and for this opportunity that we had to close out um, the book of Genesis and Lord, from these we saw here, these four points. And God, really, there are so many other things that we could have looked at tonight. There are so many other um, key major elements from this book. But God, I, I think these four things are really some helpful things that we studied collectively as a group that you put on my heart to share this evening. And we didn't know, I didn't know studying this week that we would be in the worship center together as a church family, but the truth of the matter is you knew that. You knew that we would be here together. You knew that this would, this would happen. So I pray that it would have been a help, that it would have been clearly communicated. And God, that you would help us to rely on and have faith in a God that always keeps his promises and always keeps his word. And God, we're thankful that you hear us. We're thankful that you care about us and that you love us so much that you sent your son to die for us. God, may we be continually thankful and looking to you as we go through this journey in life. Lord, we love you so much and we're extremely grateful for this opportunity that we had to meet this evening. In your name we pray. Amen. We're going to dismiss here in just a minute, and I know it's early, okay, so two things about me, okay, you know I don't speak very long, usually I'm like 30 minutes, so usually I get up at 7.30, 7.25 to speak in youth group, and then I go about 30 minutes, okay, these guys know, I'm 30 minutes, and we're about, we were about 28 minutes tonight, okay, so I'm usually, that's, that's like my target goal, so we're a little bit early, uh, if you came in late, I did want to announce uh, the reason we're all combined and we're all together this evening is a uh, pastor had to slip out for an emergency with a church member. And uh, so if you just be in prayer for that situation, we're not going to be giving out any details or anything, but if you could just be in prayer for him in that situation uh, as you leave this evening and during that time, I know that would be a huge help um, for him and for this family. And uh, be, uh, uh, again, just these few announcements. Seed line next week. If you haven't signed up, you can sign up on the church app or out in the lobby. Uh, you can sign up for that event uh, for seed line. And then uh, if you have kids in Masters Club, now they're going to walk out. I don't know, hopefully Caleb's watching online because they're, uh, they're going to be like, wow, we're like 15 minutes early by the time you get over there. Um, so, but if you want to walk over there, if you have kids in Masters Club, uh, they're going to be doing a little ceremony and giving out awards and things. And so you can head over there and uh, that'll be a good time in Masters Club. And then Wednesday night, Pastor Jay is going to be starting his series on March 24th. So thankful for each of you. And again, this was a unique thing that happened. Uh, but we're thankful that we were able to spend time in God's Word this evening. And I uh, hope that you guys have a great night. And uh, I know Pastor tries to get out by 8, so got you out earlier, all right? God bless you, and we'll see you on Sunday morning at 10 for our morning service. He's calling me to lay aside my selfishness and pride So He can mold my heart and make it more like His And lately I've been seeing more each day The wisdom and new wonders of His grace Just as I am